Leadership is really about setting the tone. It's about creating an environment where the people beneath you can excel. One of the most important parts of being a great leader is being a great listener. You really need to meet people where they are, to give them feedback, to encourage them to be part of something that's bigger than themselves. It's about being collaborative, showing that you understand how to support people beyond the scope of your own individual role. I think great leaders know how to synthesize multiple sources of information, make smart decisions, execute a plan, and own their actions. I think the best way to motivate a team is to make sure that everyone's really clear that no matter how big or small their job is, what they contribute is absolutely fundamental to doing what we need to do. Make sure your team feels invested. I may be the person that a viewer sees when they tune into Fast Money, but there's a whole team that makes this show possible. Everybody has to feel that the success of the show is their success too. People appreciate you telling them the truth, and sometimes that truth that honesty has to be a hard honesty. You're not quite ready for this, but here's how and why you can get ready. I try to motivate my team simply by example and to make sure that people understand that the enthusiasm I have for what I do is real and that I want them to be a part of it. I think it's about being as present as possible, whether that's in meetings, on emails, and texts. People are taking cues from you. Do movements create leaders or do leaders create movements? I'm a firm believer that leaders create movements, but I think it starts with people and it can start with you as soon as you accept that responsibility. To me, leadership is being competent in your lane while being open to learning from others around you and caring about the well-being of your team, so much so that others are willing to trust in you and follow your direction. You have to lead from where you are. You will not arrive or reach that corner office if you are not showing skills of a leader in the position that you're in. Finally, come in early, stay late, and work hard. And people will emulate you if you do that. And A, B, G, always be growing. Seek out the people that you admire. Learn from them about how to problem solve, and then incorporate those skills into your own work. Hey, everyone. I'm Cesar Condi, chairman of the NBC Universal News Group. I am so pleased that you're able to join us today for the spring session of our NBCU Academy Next Level Summit. The topic of today's summit is unlocking your leadership potential. Whatever career you ultimately embark on, learning how to lead will empower you no matter where you are on your career path or what you hope to do. Today, you will hear about leadership from some of the most talented and successful people across our business. They include NBC Universal leaders, as well as veteran journalists and anchors from NBC News, CNBC, MSNBC, Telemundo, and of course, all of our local stations. They have risen to the top of the profession through excellence and hard work. And like their mentors who helped them, they are eager to share some of their stories and tips with you. The summit today will cover a rich agenda of subjects on leadership, ranging from mentorship to leading in an AI world to developing effective communication skills. And you will get to meet the leadership team behind NBC Universal's upcoming Paris Olympics coverage. Today's summit is the latest in our ongoing efforts to train our next generation of journalists and leaders through a close collaboration between NBCU Academy and 45 institutions of higher learning. We are so proud of the work of the Academy, an award-winning training and recruitment program preparing our next generation of journalists and leaders. With that, I'll leave you to be inspired by the insights and perspectives that NBCU Academy has in store over the next few hours. Thank you again for participating in today's program. Thank you, everybody, and thank you to Cesar Conde as well. Uh, hello and welcome here to NBCU Academy's fifth Next Level Summit, Unlocking Your Leadership Potential. I'm Contessa Brewer. I'm a correspondent here at CNBC, and we couldn't be more thrilled to have you all here live from our beautiful new studio at CNBC Global Headquarters. If you're wondering who's in the crowd here in the studio, we are joined by college students, future journalists, digital tech innovators. We've got some movers and shakers. Maybe we've got some troublemakers here too. Maybe. We all know from the classroom to the boardroom, leadership is a critical skill for success throughout your career. 
And today you'll hear valuable advice about how to level up your leadership skills from top executives, from content creators, and from talent at NBC Universal, Telemundo, and beyond. Here's what you can expect. Starting with my friend, Melissa Lee, host of CNBC's Fast Money. She will be joined by top leaders from CNBC, MSNBC, Telemundo Station Group, and NBC Universal Entertainment as they discuss how to lead from where you are. And then you can choose between three breakout sessions. NBC News business and data correspondent Brian Chung examines how to lead in a rapidly evolving AI world. We'll look at how best to navigate this new and challenging landscape. A panel of dynamic leaders talk to NBC News stay tuned correspondent Marquise Francis about the keys to effective mentors and sponsors and how really great leaders excel in both of those roles. In our third breakout, MSNBC's The Weeknd co-host Alicia Menendez delves into effective communication and leadership styles with top-notch communicators, including Emmy Award-winning financial icon Susie Orman. Don't want to miss that. Followed by a phenomenal fireside chat with three members of the leadership team behind NBC's upcoming Paris 2024 Olympics coverage, moderated by Today News anchor Craig Melvin. And then CNBC's Bertha Coombs will introduce The Edit, a collaboration between NBCU Academy and Adobe aimed at fostering digital and media literacy across middle schools and high schools. Next, you'll have the choice of three career expo rooms, acing your leadership interview, leading from the classroom to the newsroom, and The Edit, unleashing your digital storytelling leadership skills with Adobe. NBCU Academy is an award-winning development initiative allowing you to learn, to grow, and engage with us for free. NBCU Academy is part of the Project Up, the Comcast 1 billion, yes, with a B, commitment to advance digital equity and support for the next generation of journalists and content creators. We're building a pipeline here from classrooms to newsrooms and creative spaces everywhere. This free virtual summit is just one of the many ways NBCU Academy provides access and opportunity, helping students and professionals in these fields grow their careers. And we have partnerships with 45 academic institutions spanning the U.S. It reflects various geographic and socioeconomic communities across the country. Students from three of those partner schools are standing by live to pepper our panelists with questions throughout the day. Hello, you're looking live at students from The Ohio State University in Columbus. Great to see you all. Say hello to the students from the University of Florida in Gainesville. Love seeing you there in this morning. And many of our partner schools, such as the Institute of American Indian Arts in Santa Fe, New Mexico, holding watch parties right now. And for the first time, we have middle school and high school students from SLAM Miami Charter Schools joining us and getting ready to participate in today's summit. This is phenomenal. Remember, if you're watching from home, you can submit questions live in the Q&A tab on your screen. And if you stick around for our career expo rooms a little later today, you'll be able to come on camera and actually engage with our panelists. And now, let's toss it over to my colleague, Melissa Lee, for our very first panel of the day. Melissa? Thank you so much, Contessa. Hello, everybody. Great to see you in person and virtually. I didn't realize we had such a young audience out there, middle school and high school. This right. is very exciting. My name is Melissa Lee. I'm the host of CNBC's Fast Money. What is leadership? Because that's what we're here to talk about, right? Well, leadership is a term we often associate with corner offices and prestigious titles. But the truth is, leadership isn't confined by your position. It's a mindset, it's an approach, a set of skills that can be honed and leveraged, practiced at any level of your career. And today, we are fortunate to have a panel of accomplished leaders whose journeys demonstrate that you can have tremendous impact regardless of your starting point or your age. We are joined today by Casey Sullivan, the CNBC president, Rashida Jones, MSNBC president, Jose Cancela, Telemundo Station Group president, and Francis Barrick, NBC Universal Entertainment Chairman. Thank you all for joining us. And folks, let's give these guys a round of applause for being here, right? And just a reminder, for those of you participating virtually, drop your questions in the Q&A box to the right of your screen, and we'll get to them throughout the discussion. We'll also be taking questions from students at our NBCU Academy Partner Schools. We'll be looking to take as many questions as we can, so send them all in. All right, this first question, I just want to go around the horn here and ask this one. What is a key leadership advice that you'd give to your younger self? If you were this age, 
or maybe even middle school or high school. <laughs> Rashida, why don't you start us off? Sure. Um, if I were to go back to middle school, high school, or early career, Rashida, I would say one of the biggest things that you guys can, can think about and, and, and try to channel is don't try to solve it all yourself. Don't think you have to know everything to be a leader. I think one of the points about leading from where you are and whatever position and role you are is important, but that doesn't mean that you have to be the person who has the answers to everything. If you're thinking about um, how can you bring leadership to your role, sometimes it might be being curious. Sometimes it might be asking questions. Sometimes it might be collaborating, but don't think you have to know it all. Yeah, Casey? Um, I would go back and I, I, I would encourage me to find a mentor who mm -hmm who would tell me what I needed to hear, not what I wanted to hear. Um, I had a pivotal point in my career where I was working in finance, in healthcare, um, and I had a head of research and development say to me, uh, he pulled me aside and said, Casey, do you wanna, what do you wanna be when you grow up? Um, and, uh, and what are you passionate about? And um, I wasn't, he said, if you, wanna be pa if you wanna go places in healthcare, you're gonna have to double down on, on science and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with doctors. Uh, and I had a real hard look about them from that, and I said, I don't, and I'm probably not capable of doing that. Uh, but I was really passionate about media, uh, and I, I chose to get into this, and every day it's a joy to dive in, and, and I'm passionate about the area that we're in. And it, it was that pivotal point of t someone telling me to get off what was a, a really good path to maybe get on a better path. Mm -hmm. Francis? I think it would be about um, being passionate but picking your battles. And I speak as someone who is quite stubborn, and I've now learned that about myself. But I can remember situations very early in my career when I would be so passionate and I would be fighting for everything. And you have to be able to weigh the pros and cons of you know, whether it's actually worth the win um, and, then, and then reason with yourself. You know, I can remember there was one occasion where I was sort of tussling over a show that I really didn't think was right for us to produce for the brand. And I got myself so in a state that I was sort of like frustrated to the point of tears. And then now, Andy Cohen and I laugh about that show. And it was, <laughs> I'd like to say, um, there's always good and there's bad because the show was a bust, but it was the thing that told us that Andy Cohen could write a good recap of a day's shooting that then he started um, doing as a podcast. And then, so it led to his career, but I was furious at the time, so. Pick your battles. <laughs> Jose? I guess if I could go back, I'd tell my younger self to do your homework. So um, the fact is that if you do have an opportunity to go back to, to, to your younger self is don't sweat the small stuff. It's almost to, to the point where what Melissa said. Sometimes we get so caught up in, in, in the day-to-day -day that uh, we don't remember that Going forward, those, those moments will really be a, but a blip in your young life. And you'll learn something from it, but you can grow out of it. So um, my younger self, do your homework and don't sweat the small stuff. These are all pearls of wisdom that were learned maybe the hard way. Yeah. You guys have, have, sure for have me. come from, from many different paths and you came up to your position currently um, from you know, many different areas, and Rashid, I want to start off with you with your story, because I think this will be very inspiring, particularly to our audience today. In college, you actually had a full-time job yes. as a morning show producer, which wow. is just mind-boggling to me. <laughs> Team no sleep. <laughs> <laughs> what did you learn from that? How did you do that? Um, and you actually graduated with decent grades? Well, I mean, time. how did you do all that? <laughs> um, it, it was my passion, and so I was willing to make the sacrifice and, and commitment. I knew from very early that my calling was to be a producer. I know some folks in here said that they're interested in producing, highly recommend it. Um, but I knew I wanted to be a producer, and I had this opportunity to work full-time in a newsroom, and I was still in school. And so um, as much as I loved school and loved education, I was not interested in being there longer than four years. <laughs> And I also wanted to take advantage of this opportunity. And so I found ways to make it work. And I would like sleep in shifts. And I was the morning show producer. So I worked overnight and I'd take a nap. And I'd go to media law class and take a nap and, and, and continue through the day. But it was my passion. And I knew that this was the, the path that I was destined to be on. I knew this is what I was meant to be. And for me, in that moment, as I'm starting this kind of weird, crazy schedule, and then 9 11 happened. And so what I thought was my wow. passion, I knew deeply was my passion. Mm -hmm. And I knew deeply that it was important for me to do both. And so that, you know, I'll just go back to that same word, the passion is what drove me through it. And it's part of the reason I'm here today because I had this front row seat to covering history in real time very early in my career. 
Yeah, I, I heard that you actually slept in, in edit bays. That's where you took your There were times when time? I did, yes, especially when we had a, a big story like, you know, the mm -hmm. tragedy of 9-11. I wanted to be in the newsroom. I wanted to be right. where the action was happening. I wanted to be available and accessible. And so if it meant there was a three hour window between this show and that show and I wanted to help for the, for the next thing, I found a lovely pillow and a blanket and found a way to, to always be around and be um, accessible. And that's another thing that, that I think was a lesson learned for me early mm -hmm. in my career was raising your hand to do things, even if they make no sense whatsoever, even if it's beyond what your core skill set is or even your core interest level, being around and being um, accessible will also illustrate to your colleagues and your, and your bosses your willingness and your passion to contribute in any way that you can. Mm -hmm. Initiative. Yeah. Jose, you had an interesting path. Mm. The U.S. Air Force is where you started. What did you, I'm sure you learned a lot of leadership skills from there. So I joined the Air Force for all the wrong reasons. I wanted to get away. Um, it ended up being the best decision of, of my life because the Air Force gave me discipline in a way that, that I, I could have never uh, imagined. But, but more importantly, the life lesson for me from, from the military and specifically for me in the Air Force was teamwork. And what you learn in the military is you're, you're only as strong as each other. And it, it forces you to understand the importance of teamwork. And, and that's carried through to this very day in, in my career. So. Is this a picture of you? Mm -hmm. That's how old, me. How old were you? So I was 18. <laughs> I actually joined, I actually, you, you were you're allowed to sign up um, 90 days before your 18th birthday. So that's how much I wanted to get away. <laughs> <laughs> and I signed up and when I turned 18, went to Lackland Air Force Base and well, the rest is in that picture. Here I am today, a few years <laughs> older. But teamwork was really, for me, uh, what, the one takeaway from the military, and, and a shout out to all the men and women who, who serve our great country, because uh, they really, uh, I'd, I'd ask for a round of applause for, for our military. Uh, Francis, as we had mentioned, is the chairman of NBC Universal Entertainment, and people watching might not exactly know how much ground that covers. It is a lot, the portfolio is huge. Let's take a look. This is the world's biggest stage. Holy, holy. Welcome back. What's off limits? Nothing's off limits. All right, you know what? That's it. Here we go. Let's do this. Objection. Everything has been building towards this moment, and now it's finally here. When this community calls, we respond. In good hands, all right? I'm not afraid of you. I am going to find your son. There's still a whole lot more. Can't wait. Are we ready to party? Going for a wild ride. It's gonna really get real. We have no choice but to fight. There are traitors amongst you. Do you think do you know who they are? I'm a fun villain. Welcome aboard. It does not get much better than this. Nine, 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 nine. I hear people are irrational. It's time for your burn. We're a new city, it's a new home for us. Welcome to 41. Thank you. That's what I'm talking about. I smell talent. I am the representation for country music. The games are bigger than ever. Welcome to the party zone. You want anything? For you to die. Here's to that. Yeah, here's <laughs> to that. We make the bass go. We make the rhythm go. We make the bass go. We make the rhythm go. We make the bass go. We make the rhythm go. It's bad. That's a lot. I think that's that's props to our marketing team for pulling that together. <laughs> yeah. It's like very, count, very count the number of different shows in that clip. <laughs> um, you actually though started out small. Uh, you started out working at Bravo on Long Island, and I'm told you started working on Inside the Actor's Studio uh, with the legendary actor and professor James Lipton. How how was that, and and how did that form your career? Well. Um, it started out badly. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> you may not remember this show, but it was a very intellectual talk show where a professor asked very in-depth questions about craft to actors and directors, and it was the only original program that was on Bravo when I joined Bravo. Um, and the first really job that I was assigned was 
um, to come in and give the first round of what's called focus, viewer focus results. So we had asked a whole load of the audience what they thought of the show. And I was supposed to deliver the message to the key talent, who was the interviewer, who was also a professor, and he was a big producer. And um, I will tell you that uh, it didn't go well. Um, I just, uh, number one, hadn't done my homework. I hadn't built the relationship with him. Um, and I hadn't built the trust with him. And so I go in there, and I think I'm being really polite and giving this negative feedback about the things that we want to change about the show, and he very nicely absolutely ripped me to pieces, um, then proceeded to reach out to my boss, my boss's boss, and the head of the entire company, telling them that you know I was an idiot, and then cut to you know a few years later, we, that show stayed on the air for 22 years, I think, and we had a fantastic working relationship. But the lesson was, you have to, you have to think about how you approach things, and you have to put in the homework. And I think we've already said that. And I had not done that. I had not assessed who I was talking to. And you have to understand the best way to communicate with that person. And, and you know, I think many of us can, um, we, we understand that it's a specific thing to deal with talent. It's a, um, you know, that is a skill. And delivering a difficult message is something that you have to really approach in a very, very thoughtful way. And you know, it was the best life lesson for me. Mm. Wow. Uh, we do want to get to a question here from one of our virtual audience par participants. Ohio State University, one of our affiliates, WCMH, anchor and reporter Sierra Johnson joins us for a student question. Hi, Sierra. Hi, good morning. I'm joined here by senior Ariana Smith, and she has a question. Hi, so I would love to know, as a leader, how you ensure to make accurate and ethical decisions while under extreme pressures of time and timeliness? Very good question. Casey, do you want to handle that one? Yeah, I think, um, I think it's, it's taking a, always taking a step back mm -hmm. and um, having a, a core set of people that you can bounce ideas off of when you need to. Um, because, you know, I trust my gut, but I often... Uh, like to trust and verify um, with, with a, a trusted set of uh, people that I get to, to work with. And then uh, once you've made a decision, go with it, back it, and support it fully. Yeah. Rashida, I mean, uh, with the pressures of 24-hour news, that's even yeah. more difficult. I mean, it's kind of like the first bullet in our job description is to have to make difficult decisions um, in a timely manner. And I think everything Casey said um, was, was dead on. The, uh, the only other thing I would add is, you know, I double down a little bit on trusting your gut. You know, oftentimes we will second guess and overthink. And if you've done your homework, if you're prepared, if you're knowledgeable, if you're well versed in whatever the issue is and the topic, um, oftentimes you have the answers. You should absolutely have kind of a, a, a board of directors, so to speak, where you trust their point of view and you trust their perspective. But I think sometimes also just being confident in your own ability to make the call um, is really important. And I think especially in these times where everything that we're covering on a daily basis there's some element to the stories that we're covering and the material that we're covering that's unprecedented. And so, you know, oftentimes, you know, we've all been around long enough that, oh, we've covered an election before. We've, we've even an eclipse, we've covered an eclipse. Mm -hmm. We've done all these things. The variables change every single time. Every time. And so you can't just go by the playbook that you, you used last time. You, in real time, have to um, reassess where you are. I always say to my team, if any of my team members are watching, you're going to roll your eyes when you hear this, but every day brings a new reality, and every moment brings a new reality, and then kind of taking stock of where you are at that moment and reevaluating your decision. What if your board of directors doesn't uh, correspond with what your gut is telling you, Jose? Hmm. Well, if, if, if you believe in, in, hmm. in your decision, you lean in. Uh, that's what a leader does, and you, you push your, your idea forward. Um, in the end, if it didn't work out, it doesn't matter because it's something that you were passionate about and, and, and you move forward on that idea. Now, having said that, there's nothing wrong with a reconsideration either. Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, some folks get locked in and do not allow for further evaluation. There's nothing wrong with further evaluation. I always tell folks, let me sleep on it. That famous adage, mm -hmm. let me sleep on it, it exists for a reason. Because sometimes giving yourself some distance 
from a decision lets you look at it from a different perspective. And sometimes you'll come back to the same place, but sometimes you won't. It raises this point about learning from it, too, I thought was really, really important. You make a decision, you make a call. Again, some are small decisions, some are big decisions. But I think just that constant um, learning and iterating, as Francis laid out, is really important as well. We've got a question from our studio audience here. So tell us your name and your question. Hi, my name's Imani Perry. I'm from Townsend University, Maryland. So my question is, what leadership skill or skills have you taken with you every step of the way of your journey? Francis? Mm -hmm. um, I think one of the most important things is about being consistent and intentional. And, and that goes to everything you do. Uh, you know, I've worked with people who have not been very consistent in the way that they, they interact with employees, and it creates a bit of chaos. It's really important that people understand who that person that is going to show up is going to show up consistently. It's really important that you think about how you be intentional about everything you do, whether it's sort of sitting in a, on a Zoom call and how much you're paying attention. You're going to be judged. It's just human nature. People are going to judge and they're going to take cues from you. And just sort of like really, really being thoughtful about how you're coming across. And that goes to even sort of any type of communication, whether it's text or emails. Just sort of be intentional and consistent all the time. Mm -hmm. Casey. Uh, you know, my, my mom used to always remind me that I didn't know everything and that, um, uh, <laughs> that, that remind me that I did not know everything <laughs> and, that's, like and, and, to, and to listen. And I think, um, I think that that's a, a very good skill set is that there are often different perspectives. So I think taking on that skill set of, of listening and, and, and taking in uh, other viewpoints. We've got a question from the chat. Uh, it's from Jose who asks, how can I improve my ability to make decisions under pressure, ensuring that they are both effective and thoughtful? Uh, Rashida. Um, practice makes perfect. Mm. You know, there, there are often times, I do this to this day, where I'll, I'll see something happen in another industry or another business or another company even, and I go through the role play of, okay, so if I had to make the call, what would I do here? If I had to make the decision, if this thing came up and I had to assess in real time, like, you know, go, what would what, what, what I do? And so I think some of it is, is like just exercising that muscle. Right. Um, some of it is just kind of remaining forever curious and, and, and finding ways to kind of inform yourself and educate yourself. So if the unknown scenario comes uh, in front of you, you've, you're armed with information and, and ready to go. But I, I think, you know, just the, kind of that practice of always kind of staying ready and thinking in that kind of very intellectually curious way is, is one way to help. Yeah, preparation was a, a theme that all of you guys were yeah. talking about. We've got a question from our audience here. Um, tell us your name and, and your question. Hi, my name is Lisbeth Fuentes, and I'm from the City College of New York. My question is, how do leaders maintain authenticity and transparency in their communication efforts? Oh. Uh, Francis, why don't you handle that? Because you were just saying, talking about being present yeah. and intentional. Yeah, I think being authentic and, and transparent is absolutely key. People will feel it if you don't really believe in something. I think we've all talked about, you know, the word passion has come up a lot. You, 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 have to, you, you have to believe that the person that you are willing to follow into a strategy or into a decision or into work actually believes in what they're doing. Um, so I think it's, that, it, it's really, really very important. Um, in terms of being transparent, I think the more information you can give, I think, you know, in, there have been times when, you know, in the past people thought of um, information as power and trying to keep it to yourself. And actually, the best way to get the most out of a team is to give them the most information and so that everyone can make more informed decisions. I, you know, I, I think two, two things. I think, I think it being OK to be vulnerable, mm -hmm. I think it, that, that makes you more authentic. Uh, my wife reminds me all the time that, Casey, it's OK for people to know you're human. And I think it's, <laughs> I think it's a good reminder that you know, we're, we all have our flaws. We're all, yeah. we have vulnerabilities. Um, and then I think on the transparency piece, I think it's okay to say you don't know. And I think um, I, there have been many instances where I've, it's important to stand in front of a, a group and, and take their questions. And it's okay to not know all the answers and, and let them know you're in the boat together with them and we're gonna figure out how to solve whatever the challenges that we're trying to tackle. Okay. Correct. Uh, for our next question, we're gonna go now to Reagan Shepard, our student correspondent at the University of Florida. Hey, Reagan. Gators. Go Gators. <laughs> 
Hello, and welcome to the Atlas Lab here at the University of Florida College of Journalism and Communications. I'm here with fourth year student Calista Cotteron. I'm media production and management technology major, and she has a question for you all. Good morning. Um, how do you suggest we as leaders, um, where traditional hierarchies are no longer sufficient to drive meaningful change and innovation? Jose? Say again. Can you repeat that? Sorry. How do we navigate leadership where traditional hierarchies may no longer be sufficient or to drive um, innovation and change? Look, um, I, that, that's, that's, a, that's a broad question, but I would say that as, as an individual growing in an organization, uh, following what we've talked about here, uh, about uh, being, uh, in, having initiative, being responsible, uh, will make sure that you enter into an organization that you can make your own path. Uh, it's so challenging for us in, to be able to kind of put you in a place and, and make things happen for you. It happens from your, from your own self. Um, let's say you put yourself in, in, in this position to be able to continue to grow in, in, an, in an organization. It's, it's, it's tough sometimes, and in a world today where we're so surrounded by so many different challenges, all I would say is be yourself, be true to yourself, be responsible. I tell my kids all the time, if you're responsible, uh, that goes a long way because it brings with it a lot of different aspects. Being responsible in any organization will allow you to grow no matter where you are in the process. I wanted to ask you guys, you know, to sort of flip the questions around because we're, you're talking from the perspective of being a leader already. If we are interacting with leaders in terms of how we communicate, how can we be transparent? How can we be honest? How can we do all of these things that you say we should do um, if it's going to challenge that leader or if that's not necessarily what the leader wants to hear? How do we you know, hone that message. Yeah, I think, I, you know, one thing I would say, which is an answer to your question and kind of an answer yeah. to her question is, part of being a leader is bringing your unique perspective to the table. As a leader, I value hearing from employees who might have a different take or a different understanding or, or, or look at things through a different lens. I think it's your responsibility as a leader, and we talked about leadership comes in on every single level, no matter where your position is. It helps me to do my job if you come in with a certain lens and a certain perspective. I think the, this current generation has done an excellent job of kind of flipping that on its head. And the idea isn't that all decisions come from the top down. We're better informed if you bring your unique you know, lens and your unique perspective to the conversation. It will help me to make better decisions. Sure. And so I, I think it's an imperative as a leader, no matter where you are in the organization, to bring that superpower to the, yeah, to the yeah. company. What I would add to that is don't be afraid. Yeah. yeah. Do not be afraid to challenge authority within the organization. And, and that doesn't mean that you have to act in, in a way that's disrespectful. But if you believe that an idea that has been brought forth could be bettered by something that you think, bring it forth. Do not be afraid. What happens a lot in many leadership circles is that we get surrounded by an echo chamber. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when that echo chamber is in full force, we make bad decisions. So the idea of being surrounded and having people in the organization that are not afraid uh, is critical to the growth of any organization. And you'll be remembered yeah. for that. You yeah. remember those people who yeah, speak you remember up them. And, yeah. You remember I, them. I, th I think that's actually a critical thing. It's about having an opinion and expressing the opinion. But I would say, just going back to the innovation question, we're in an industry which is changing faster than at any time in the whole history of media right now, and we need to innovate constantly. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and innovation comes from lots of different ideas and lots of different perspectives. And you know, to the echo chamber, you want to be able to hear those perspectives and you want to be able to hear opinions. And it's, um, and, and yes, there is definitely a skill in how do you articulate that opinion right. and, and, and doing it so that it can be heard and there's going to be different, different times when that calls for different means of communication. But uh, you know, we will only succeed as a business 
if we are listening to new ideas and, and if, we are, if we are hearing lots of different points of and view. And I, th I think if you, if you bring a solution with it too, not just a problem, yes. I think that goes a long way. Yep, yes. all right. Let's get to a question from the chat. Uh, Patricia Sidney asks, what strategies or approaches do you believe are most effective in nurturing and developing leadership potential within a team? Uh, Casey? I think uh, gaining shared buy-in of, of, of mm -hmm. where you're going. Um, and then something I talk to my team a lot about is uh, being in a boat together. Uh, I'm a big believer in um, uh, serving uh, leadership of, of, of my role is to, to try to enhance the folks on my team to do more. Uh, but this concept of being in a boat together that if we collectively are trying to get somewhere. Yeah, Rashida. Yeah, I think, you know, as I think about within a team, again, I'm going to go back to this concept of leadership happens on every single level. And I think, you know, finding opportunities for you to bring the unique value that you have to decisions to the conversation. You know, I think about in a show environment, I'm as interested in the story pitch from an AP who saw on their TikTok feed this story bubbling up in this community because guess what, it's probably not coming up on my TikTok feed because I don't really have a TikTok feed. But <laughs> they're going to see things that are different um, that might be relevant to their, to their audience, to, to their you know, generation that I might not see. But the value comes from not just seeing it and having the idea, but having the initiative to say, you know, essentially, I'm going to be a leader on this topic here. And here's, here are some stories, here are some issues, here are some information that maybe you don't have and you don't see. I put high value in that because, again, in a world where, you know, ideally your team um, is made up of a bunch of different types of people and age and gender and lifestyle and all these other things, I want to make sure you're, you, you're bringing that leadership to the table and bringing what's unique about you. And I see that as a, a key value in leadership. And I would just add that as a leader or as a participant, be a good listener. Mm -hmm. We go through life just ramming through, and we don't take time to really hear what people are saying. And sometimes it's not just in the spoken word. It's in a body language. It's interpreting a room. How, what, is, what is the energy? That listening factor will serve you well for the rest of your lives, within your family, within your jobs, within your friends. Be a good listener is uh, something that it's much easier said than done, but something that you should pay close attention to. I try to tell myself every day, uh, listen. And that's listen important and at listen. every level. I know we talked about the beginning there, you know, we've got as young as middle school members listening, but there are thousands of people who are in this program right now, many of them, you know, middle, in the middle point of their career even, you don't lose, there, there's not a point where you get to a position and you have to stop listening. Like never, that's important never. from pre-career all the way to the, to the folks who are, who are listening in today who are well established and just trying to find ways to continue to grow in their leadership. Right. We've got a question from our audience here. She's been waiting very patiently. Thank you. <laughs> Tell us your have. name and your question. Hi, my name is Nicole Passero from Montclair State University. My question is what are some tips for building confidence within yourself as a leader and just in the journalism field in general? the journalism field specifically and in general. Well, in general, Francis, why don't you handle that part of it? Yeah, I mean, in, in general, I think that it starts with the self-talk that you give yourself and just being sort of positive about that. And then, and, and then focus on the work and, and focus on, um, you know, what, what you're actually trying to accomplish rather than the way that you're doing it. And I know that that can sometimes get in the way, but just it, it, it is a lot about self-talk and self-belief. There's, there's nobody who goes into anything new who thinks that they've got it all down pat, even if it looks like they do. Um, it's just, you know, that's, that's just about, you know, learning as you go and getting more comfortable and the practice is perfect and all of those things. I'd like to add, don't be afraid to fail. Failure is, is, is not a bad thing. It's what you learn from it, how you get up from whatever happened that didn't work out your way. That's how you build confidence, is through failure. So if you're failing, it's because you're trying. And that will go a long way in giving you a life sequence that will help you take you anywhere in any career path that you decide to explore. 
I only add one tactical thing. Um, one thing that will help build that confidence is doing the work and being familiar with the work. Mm -hmm. And so one thing that I love about your generation is you guys, can, you can go do a talk show right now on your phone. You can go produce right. a video. You can go create the thing using you know, d uh, equipment and, and technology that you have readily available. When I was in your chair, I had to lug around a camera that was about <laughs> this big across campus just to shoot a stand-up. You can do that right now. And so in a world where you're creating your own content, even if it goes to Nowheresville, even if it's just on your YouTube channel, but I think once you get into the industry, you start creating content, you realize this, there's a science to it, there's an art to it, but it's doable. And the more of that you get under your belt, do your own writing, do your own producing, do your own content creating. So when you go into to the industry and you go into those early career jobs, you've got an understanding and a confidence that you know, you know what you're doing. We've got a question from the chat. Maria Isabel Amaya asks, what has been a mistake that taught you the most? <laughs> Oh, we were just talking about failure. Well, Casey, why don't you handle this? Oh, thanks, Melissa. <laughs> um, <laughs> and the mistake was sitting next to you right now. Uh, no. <laughs> I, uh, I made it, uh, so I started my career with, uh, with G, um, and I was lucky enough to get into this training program that they had, and you get to take a class with it. And um, it was, a, an, a, the first class was like an accounting class, and I was a history major in college. And I, um, I underprepared for the, that first test, and I failed the first test. And if you fail the class, you lose your job, which is not a good thing. Um, so um, I really, it was really, it was the kind of the kick in the butt that I needed. Um, and I went from bottom of the class to top of the class over the two-year period of the, the, the course. But it was, it was that staring failure right in my face. That mm -hmm. Yeah. Jose, you were just talking about not being afraid to fail. So what was that mistake? That was so important. Oh, I think I've made m many mistakes throughout <laughs> my career, and probably the common theme through through those mistakes have been a, a rush to act on something mm -hmm. and not giving myself enough time to think it through. Because as a leader, you want to show that you're in charge or that that you can trust in what I do, and you make a decision without really thinking it through because you want to, lack of better words, show off. And you know what? It comes back to bite you. So uh, I, I now, still happens, but try to, I do not rush into decisions anymore mm -hmm. uh, because it's always come back to haunt me. Francis? Well, I like to not think of it as mistakes. We it's gentler to yourself to say that didn't pan out. Um, I, think, I think we make mistakes every day. I mean, there's, Absolutely. you know, we're in the business of creating content and launching shows, and there, is so, there are so many things that can go wrong and so right in that whole equation, and then we have to connect them to the audience, and there's so much that can go, you can have the most absolutely perfect show. We've launched shows that I really, really believe in, and we just weren't able, for whatever reason, mm. we did not manage to connect it to the audience. We didn't market them right, or we didn't build up this sort of social presence for them. And so I think the, the most important thing is not to dwell on the actual mistakes, but to dwell on, OK, what did we learn here, and what could we do differently? And then really think about the times when you have actually managed to course correct. You know, I think about some of the shows that, that we've launched. There was the, you know, we, we launched the first sort of fashion competition show this goes back years with Project Runway. We had the first three episodes, nobody watched it. We decided as a team, there were 10 of us in the room saying, we really believe in this show, we think it's absolutely sort of fantastically produced. How, how do we get people to watch it? So we just aired nothing but those three episodes across the entire network for about a two week period. And it was over the holiday period. And then it came back and the next week, it doubled, the next week it tripled, but it was literally just a sort of like word of mouth. And it's a dangerous strategy, we wouldn't do that now, but it is, and there are many other tools to do, but it, it is sort of like, okay, this is not, this is going off the rails, can we course correct? And there are some things that you can course correct, and there are other things that you can't, and you just have to sort of learn and move on. But yeah, we, you know, but on the plus side, we have many successes too, and it's sort of like focus on what really did work there. Right. Rashida, last word to you. Sure. Um, I think one thing that I'm constantly reminding myself um, is, is, and this was a mistake that I made, is learning how to craft your message for the audience. And so, you know, I think about even, you know, my own household, 
the way that I might craft the message to my, my 15 year old daughter is different from my 18 year old son. My daughter is her mother's child, so she, she's, she can take it a little bit sharper, a little bit more direct. My son is wonderful, but I wouldn't be as direct with him as I would be with her. Um, and I learned that early on in, in my time at NBC, actually. And I remember coming in and, um, you know, there was like a graphics thing and I wanted to do it and they couldn't figure out how to do it. And I'm like, I don't understand why you guys can't do this here. I know it's doable. <laughs> and I remember um, one, of, one, of our, one of my colleagues, Mark Greenstein, kind of pulled me aside and, uh, and said, you're not wrong. But if you communicate it this way, people do not want to go into the battle with you. People don't want to run into the fire with you. They will work double time to get the thing done that you want done if you communicate it in a way that feels a little bit more collaborative. And I was like, little old Southern me, am I being too harsh here? But I realized part of the, part of the, part of the lesson was learn how to craft your message so you get the most out of people and make, it, make them understand that, that you're all in the same boat, you're all part of the same team and that it's not necessarily a criticism, but it's a way to push us all forward. And so that's something that I constantly remind myself of, and, and Mark will probably remind me to remind myself because he's very good that way. But the idea is like learn how to get people to want to work with you, not because they have to, because they want to. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you all for such a great conversation. I have learned so much. Let's give them a round of applause, please. CNBC President Casey Sullivan, MSNBC President Rashida Jones, Telemundo Station Group President Jose Cancela, and NBC Universal Entertainment Chairman Francis Barrick. Uh, we've got so much more to come here today, so let's get back to my friend Contessa Brewer for the next set of panels. Contessa. You know who's so excited about this? All the professors and the teachers listening, the big takeaway is do your homework. So to all those middle and high schoolers in Miami, you know, when it comes from the big bosses, you gotta listen. We are just getting started. It's time for you to choose between three incredible breakout sessions. Right here on the main stage, artificial intelligence is revolutionizing the operations of media companies. You can learn from top experts covering the AI revolution and leaders building the tools of tomorrow. Breakout stage number two, dynamic leaders will unveil the keys to effective mentorship, fostering opportunities for real growth. Discover how to identify the right mentor, or the right sponsor, become an invaluable guide for others, and learn how to excel uh, in both roles. And on breakout stage number three, strong leaders possess both effective communication and leadership styles, so you'll gain some valuable insights from top-notch communicators, including personal finance icon, Susie Orman. And after that, we have an exciting fireside chat with the leaders behind NBC's coverage of the 2024 Olympic and Paralympic Games. Learn how they'll combine state-of-the-art technology and creative storytelling across multiple continents to cover the games. And we'll introduce you to the greatest athletes in the world while doing so. Then join us as we introduce The Edit, a collaboration between NBCU Academy and Adobe poised to equip the next generation of creative leaders with essential skills to excel in the digital world. You heard Rashida talking about how we can all do this on our phones. This is a great skill to have. Last but not least, we have three amazing career expos where you'll have the chance to practice a leadership interview, learn about essential leadership skills, and learn how to excel at storytelling with Adobe. We have all that coming up. But first, let's head over to our breakout rooms Click on the session of your choice by selecting the Stages tab on the left-hand side of your screen. And don't worry, if you can't decide, you can jump around between all three. We'll see you soon.